Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonniebabeCrochet.com and you've come to the video tutorial to learn how to make the cabled tennis trio. Okay, for this project you're going to need some of the fixation by Cascade Yarns. It's a very, let me show you a little bit about this. It's a very elastic yarn. It has 98.3% cotton, 1.7% spandex and it's very, very nice for projects like headbands, um, armbands, etc. Now this armband can also double as a cup cozy to keep the moisture away from your either cold drink or to keep the heat away from a hot drink. Okay, what else are you going to need? You are going to need a crochet hook size 6. Okay, and I'm going to recommend that you also have on hand a pair of scissors as well as a yarn needle for hiding loose strands. Let's go ahead and begin. Okay, for this pattern, I just wanted to state up front that if whether you are going to try to make the wristbands or the headband, they are all begun in the same way. I'm going to show you how to make a wristband, but if you have the directions, I encourage you to download the pattern from CascadeYarns.com and it'll show you that the headband is done the exact same way. You just have more repeats. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the wristband. We are going to make a slip knot. And then we are going to chain 18. Now as you're working with this yarn, be sure that you just try to work as normally as you can. It is very stretchy, so you don't want to try to work really tightly, but just try to crochet as you normally would. Now that I have finished chaining those 18 chains, I'm going to start row one by working a double crochet in the third chain. So I count one, two, and the third chain from the hook. Now the the yarn um, is a little more challenging perhaps to see where the stitches are, but not too difficult. So you may just have to use a little extra effort to find where these are. Um, and I am just, as you can see, just working along the side of one of the chains. I'm not working in the back bump. If you prefer to use the back bump, that's up to you. Um, but it's not a requirement. I actually prefer to not do that. So go ahead and work a double crochet in each of the remaining chains across. At the end of row one, you should have 16 double crochets plus the turning chain right here at the end. Okay, now for row two, we are going to turn and we are going to chain two, one, two. Now starting in the second stitch, we are going to work a front post double crochet. For those of you who've never worked a front post before, you simply wrap the hook like you're going to make a double crochet and the hook goes around the body of the stitch like a belt would and then you just complete the stitch as you normally would. So go ahead and do that in the next three stitches. Now the next stitch we're going to work a half double crochet and we're going to work it in the normal way working through the top loops right there at the, just like we normally would. And then we're going to do that again. We're going to do three front post double crochets. That's two and three. And then we're going to work a half double crochet in the next stitch. Now make sure that that is the very next stitch as you go across and we're going to do that again. Three front post double crochets, one in each of the next three stitches. And then a half double crochet in the next stitch, working through the top loops. And then we have three stitches left, so go ahead and work front post double crochets in the next three stitches. And then we're going to work a half double crochet in that turning chain. Just go right through the entire hole, not through a single strand, but just work that half double crochet just like so. And that ends row number two. Okay, for row number three, we're going to turn, we're going to chain two, now we're going to be working back post double crochets. Back posts are very similar to the front post except you come in the back door. You come into the back and come out the side back door and then you complete 
that back post double crochet just like you would a normal double crochet is kind of like being tied in the back so we're going to go ahead and do three of those so that's one two three and then we're going to work a half double crochet working through the top loops of that half double crochet from the last row and we're going to do this all the way across i'm going to repeat that three more times with our three back post double crochets and then a half double crochet working through the top loops. I'm just going to go ahead and finish out this row with you since it's such a short, really a short project and a short row. So three back post double crochets, half double crochet working through the top loops, and three more back post double crochets, one, two, and three, and then a half double crochet working right in that turning chain. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn. And so this is what you should have at the end of row number three. Now row number four is where we're going to cross these cables. Okay, we're going to chain two. We're going to skip the first four stitches. And by the first four stitches, that's this stitch, this one, this one, and this one. And we're going to half double crochet in that half double crochet, just like that. Now we're going to work front post treble crochets, each one in each of the next three stitches. So we wrap our hook twice and we work them just like we do the front post double crochets, except we're completing treble crochets. That's two. And three. After working those three front post trebles, we're going to actually work three front post trebles behind these stitches. And the way we do that is we come in the hole that was right here, created right here, and we're going to work around this stitch. Now it helps me a lot if I put my thumb up through that hole like so, so that I can see the stitch and actually kind of get my fingers around it. Okay. And we're going to do the next stitch, which is right here. And the third stitch. And if you're not sure, you can always look back here and find that third stitch. It's right there. And wrap that hook around it like so. Well, let me try that again. I feel like I'm getting an extra thread there. There we go. Okay, so I know it doesn't look like much right now, but this is going to start looking like something in just a few minutes. Now we're going to half double crochet in this next half double crochet, and we're halfway done with this cable. So now we're going to actually skip the next three stitches, and we're going to half double crochet in that next half double crochet from the previous row. And now we're going to front post treble crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and now working in front of these last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in these three stitches that we skipped. And I promise after this row and the next row, it's going to start looking like something. It looks kind of like a mess right now. I get that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work way over here. And we're going to work front post trebles in each of these stitches. I really like using this method um, because it really does help make these crocheted cables look a bit smoother than the traditional more boxy looking cables and that's why I've gone to this method. Okay so now we get to the end and we just work a half double crochet in that space right there. And so what you have here is the cable starting to you know split and kind of go off in opposite directions. Let's go ahead on to row number five. We're going to chain two 
and we are going to work back post double crochets in the next three stitches. Just work them straight across. We're not crossing anything. Just work them in the order in which they come at this point. Now we get to the part where the cables were crossed. So in between that in between space there, we're going to work a half double crochet. That should be the center of one side of the cable. And then now we work three more back post double crochets. One, two, three. We're going to skip this half double crochet, but we're going to half double crochet in this stitch right here. And trust me, the stitch count will remain the same as we do this because we've actually added a stitch in here. So it's okay to skip this one that keeps the count consistent. Now we're going to back post double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, sorry for all the moving around. And then after that, we're going to work another half double crochet. This is in between where these cables crossed again. It's after that last stitch and before the next stitch. And then three more. You might have to flip it up to see this. Three more back post double crochets. One, two, three. And then a half double crochet in the turning chain, which is right there. Let's go ahead, see if this looks any better. Okay, it is starting to look a lot better. So now for row number six through 21, we're going to repeat rows two through five. So row two again was working the front post double crochets. So we chain two and we work front post double crochets in the first three stitches. And then we work a half double crochet working through the top loops of that half double crochet. And then we work three more front post double crochets. And then a half double crochet in the half double crochet from the previous row. And then three more front post double crochets. And then a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then three more front post double crochets. And then we work a half double crochet in the turning chain. Now let's see how that's looking. Okay, so it's starting to look a lot better. All right, now let's go on to the repeat of row number three. Now for a repeat of row number three, we chain two. And we work back post double crochet in the next three stitches. Notice that I'm trying to use as normal tension as possible with this yarn. I know it's a little more challenging. This is not really for beginners, but I think a confident beginner could easily handle this yarn. <clears throat> it will, may take a little bit of practice, but you just want to be careful that it's not too tight. Um, that there's plenty of, of stretch and bounce back to this. Okay, so after those three back post double crochets, we work a half double crochet, and then we work three more back post double crochets. We work another half double crochet, and three more back post double crochets. A half double crochet. Again, half doubles are always worked in half doubles through the top loops. And three more back post double crochets. And then a half double crochet worked right in that turning chain. Okay, let's go ahead and turn, see what we have. So that does look much more cable-ish now. Now we're going to repeat row four which is where we cross the cables again. And I think maybe it'll be more clear as I go through this again with you. We're going to chain two. 
we're going to skip the first four stitches one two three four we have double crochet working through those top loops of that half double crochet we work front post treble crochets in the next three stitches and this is the tricky part after that we come we're going to work three front post trebles in these we want in each of these stitches but we're going to come in and work it behind these stitches we come in through the hole right here and we're going to I'm just put my thumb right up there it makes it easier to see these stitches and to pick them out and we work those front post here's the next one front post treble crochets this is the most difficult part of this entire project is just doing those three stitches okay as long as you understand where they're going and why we're doing it I think it'll help then we do a half double crochet in the center work through the top loops of that half double skip the next three stitches half double in the next stitch front post treble in the next three stitches one two three working in front of the last four stitches we're going to front post treble in those three skipped stitches and then half double crochet in that last stitch and then we're going to repeat row five we're going to chain two back post double crochet in the next three stitches the only time you use the treble crochets are when we are crossing the cable on row four mostly everything else is either front post or back post double crochets now or half double then we're going to use a half double in the middle of, in between those uh, where the cables cross and then back post double crochets in the next three stitches one two three we're going to skip the next half double and we're going to half double working through the top loops of the next half double crochet and then we're going to back post double crochet in the next three stitches one two let's get that stitch there three and then half double this is, in, this is where the cables cross in between that last stitch and the next stitch and then we're going to back post double crochet in the next three stitches And then half double crochet in this turning chain okay let's take a look and now you should have something that looks like this okay now for the rest of this pattern if you're going to make a wristband you're going to need to repeat rows 6 through 21 three times more um, I've repeated it one time but in the pattern it says after row 5 to repeat um, rows two through five four more times well I've already repeated it once so actually three more times repeating rows two through five will complete a wristband now if you wanted to go on to make the headband you're going to need to repeat rows two through five twelve more times for the headband now if you have a particularly large head you want to make an additional repeat you're free to do that if you want to make it for a child then make it a smaller headband just do fewer repeats it's as simple as that once I finish um, three more repeats on this wristband then I will show you how to connect them after repeating rows two through five a total of four times you should have something that looks like this you should have five crossings or, or where the cables cross I'll count them with you one two three four five and plus I worked row five now after you've done this for the head I'm sorry for the wristband um, you're going to also repeat rows two and three once more 
So row two is the chain two and it's working the front post double crochets and row three is working the back post double crochet. So go ahead and work the rows two and three one more time. Okay. After adding those two rows, your piece should look like this. Now if you're working on the headband, obviously it would be much longer, but the joining process is the same for the wristband and for the headband. We are going to actually, I'm going to put the yarn back behind the hook like this. And you'll see why. We're going to take the front side and we're going to face them together. And we are going to only slip stitch these across. So I'm going to join, put the hook through the remaining loops of the chain, the foundation chain, and through the two loops of the other side. And I'm going to bring this through in a slip stitch, just like that. And we're going to slip stitch each, each side together. Line up, make sure you line up those stitches. The front post will be lined up with the front post. Okay, and I believe there are going to be 17 stitches, 16 stitches plus that first stitch, which would be, I guess, part of the turning chain. Okay, so you see how I'm joining this? So go ahead and work that all the way across here. Once we get to the end, I'm going to go ahead and work an extra one through the top loops of the turning chains. Just like that. And pull it through. Now we're going to fasten off with a chain. Give it a tight pull. And I'm going to clip it. I'm going to leave a generous amount for at least four inches, four to, I like to leave more than that, more like five or six. Go ahead and pull that through, give it a nice uh, tight pull. Now that we have this on the wrong side, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to hide these strands. And the way I do that is using our yarn needle. Go ahead and thread this through. Okay, and I'm going to actually run these underneath this foundation row and you want to try to hide this if I can get it through there we go you want to try to hide this on the wrong side of your work so that it's not you know showing on the front side it's a little tricky to get these through but they just persist these stitches are a little tricky the yarns you know a little, little different than what you're used to working with Okay, so let's go ahead and pull that on through. You know what? I'm going to run them under even more stitches because with the elasticity of this, I think it would be easy for them to pull out. So I'm going to go ahead and run it under four more stitches. Okay. And I think that should be good. Give it a tug. And go ahead and clip close but don't clip your stitches because you don't want those stitches to be hurt and go ahead and do this to the other side as well that one doesn't want to be threaded okay I'm going to just run this actually in between these back and forth I mean there's no no rule as to how you hide these, but I'm just going to do this one this way. It just be a little bit easier for it to, to be hidden. Okay, that, that should be actually enough. I'm going to go ahead and clip it. Give it a tug. There it goes. And let's flip it around and see what we have. See how those stitches if you're very careful, you can line them up just like that. So here's my finished product. This feels really nice and cottony. It's going to be very absorbent. It's also very stretchy, easy to go over the hand, off and on. Let me show you another function you could use this for. Um, this could work really well on either a hot beverage cup or even a cold beverage cup, and it'll actually help keep your hands dry. 
um, as it absorbs the condensation so it's not on your hands. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit that little subscribe button in the upper right corner at the end of this uh, video, and you won't miss any of the new videos that I have coming your way. God bless. Bye-bye.